Welcome to today's shoulder mobilization sequence. All you will need is a pair of yoga blocks, so let's get into it. Start with your feet shoulder width apart and start swinging your arm in half circles and then you will move on to full circles overhead. Swap directions, make sure that you are creating the motion from your center, from your spine, and you are going to swap arms. Full circles again, we're doing five circles in each direction, and then you are going to swap direction. Keep your knees nice and soft and limber here, and make sure that you move your torso and your spine in order to get the circles nice. Next we're going to work on swinging the arm on the sagittal plane and then again full circles. We're trying to get as much rotation into that shoulder joint as possible. Five circles in each direction before you swap arms. Rotating your joints is one of the best ways to promote the flow of synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is an egg white like liquid that sits inside the cavity of your joints and it promotes and provides your joints with lubrication and ease of movement. So next up we're going to relax our arms and use our torso to throw them around our body a little bit just to limber up and then we will move back on to our full shoulder circles. This time we're going to do one circle in front and then we're gonna come back with that same arm behind us on the other side. So one circle in front, turn your body and then come back the other way behind you. Again, make sure that you are moving your torso, your center and your spine here as most of the movement will come from your center. As you can see here, I'm rotating my torso and this provides my arm with the movement. I'm also bending my knees on the downswing of the arms to catch the momentum and further limber up. Shake it out and we will now move on. So next up, we're gonna bear a little bit of weight over our wrists and our shoulders. So keep a wide stance and walk your hands out in front of you. And you are going to stack your shoulders here above your wrists and fully push out your shoulders into protraction and then sink into retraction. As you can see, we're moving between the two shoulder positions. So at the top, you're pulling your shoulder blades apart. At the bottom, you're pinching them in. Next, you're going to sway side to side, put the weight over one arm, further protract and remove the other free arm. Make sure that you really push that base shoulder up and out as much as possible before you remove that arm. That'll create a good stable base. If that progression is a little bit too heavy on your wrists, then you're simply going to pop your knees on the floor and do your shoulder retraction and protraction in this position with the support of your knees and using your back to help lift your body up as well. Again, make sure that you're still going through the correct joint motion in the shoulder so you're protracting and pushing that shoulder out as much as possible before you remove the other arm. Swiftly moving on, we're going to jump back into our wide squats and we're going to go into a lunge on one side. From here, you're going to twist your body and reach up with your hand and then on the way down at the bottom, you're going to try and keep that base arm straight See if you can get a elbow to touch the floor in between your foot and your hand. Twist your torso here and try and turn your whole body and reach as far back as possible before switching sides. Repeat here on the other side, making sure to keep that base arm nice and straight and reach to the floor with your elbow. The way you're going to be able to reach the floor with your elbow is by creating space between your shoulder blades. So think about using the retraction protraction drill you just did now to get a bit more range and see if you can touch down the elbow to the floor. Next up, we're gonna go into a lunge. You're gonna take the same arm as the front foot, place it on the outside and then draw big overhead circles with your free arm. Make sure you keep your hips nice and low. Here, you're gonna reach back to the floor towards the middle, cross one arm behind and find your lunge position on the other side in a smooth transition. Big circles with the free arm. Again, keeping your hips nice and low during the lunge. Reach down for the middle, cross the hand behind and find your lunge. After you've done a couple of sets of three circles, we're gonna to move to single circles and we're gonna focus on getting that transition in the lunge from side to side. 
when you start to get the transition and you have the pattern you can try to avoid placing your hands on the floor here and try and keep your hips nice and low on that transition. A couple of sets of single circles and then you will place your knees down on the floor, hands in front of you and you're going to begin to walk the hands out as you draw your hips further back behind you. This will create a bit of a shoulder stretch and a overhead arm extension. Try your best to keep your arms straight and think of getting the top of your ribs, almost your collarbone, down into the floor. You can also go up onto the fingertips on your hands to get a bit of a deeper stretch. You're essentially creating a little bit more space between the floor and your arms and this will allow you to go a little bit deeper. Remember to keep your hips far back behind you and try and keep your shoulders as fully elevated as possible as well. If you want to further challenge yourself, you can place your hands on some blocks as well. Uh, and the same principles apply here. You're trying to keep your shoulders nice and elevated and see if you can sink the top of your ribs down towards the floor and keep your arms as straight and overhead as possible. As you can see, there's a little bit of arch in the top of my back, the thoracic spine, and I'm also going onto fingertips here to get even more of a stretch. And you can spend between 15 to 30 seconds trying to get as much depth as possible. Next, you're going to lie yourself on your stomach in front of your cubes. Make sure you keep them at arm's length away in front of you. And from here, you're simply going to try to raise your arms overhead as much as possible. You should feel your upper traps and your shoulders working to get that overhead extension. This is very much an active motion. You're also trying to keep your chin down and your ribs down nice and connected to the floor. You do not want to be lifting your arms here by using your thoracic spine or your lumbar. Um, so make sure that you feel the activation in the very upper portion of your back and shoulders. Use your cubes here as a bit of a task orientation, so try and lift your arms up and above the cubes. You can place them on their sides if your overhead extension is really nice, or you can get flatter or lower cubes if you are struggling here. If you feel like you simply can't even disconnect your hands from the floor, uh, it doesn't really matter, you're still going to try your best to activate the muscles that are responsible for your overhead arm extension, uh, even if that means just fighting to get your hands off the floor. Next, we're going to move on to our swimmers. So we're going to start with an overhead extension lift, and then we're going to bring the hands out to the side and internally rotate the shoulders as we are lowering the arms towards our hips and then we're going to externally rotate the hands as we lift them back up overhead. So lift your arms here, full elevation, the hands out to the side, internal rotation of the shoulders as you reach down towards your hips and then on the way back you're going to externally rotate when you get to the side and finish with your overhead elevated arm extension. You want to be accumulating 10 to 15 straight overhead arm lifts and about 10 to 15 swimmers as well before you move on. Next up, you're going to turn around and lie on your back with your knees together and your feet close to your bum. Here, you're going to externally rotate the shoulders and turn your hands out and then place them next to your ears as you can see here. Use your feet to push your bum off the floor and use your arms here to shuffle your body and your hips forward over the balls of your feet. You want to try to get your center of mass, your hips, over the point of contact on the floor, making sure to keep your hips in as much of a posterior tilt as possible. This should increase the intensity and stretch that you're feeling in the front of the hips and in the front of your legs, your quad muscles. Keep pushing those hips forwards above the point of contact, above the feet. Ideally, you really want to get that center of mass nice and stacked on top of your point of contact. This will give you a lot of control later in this position and will also help to open up that anterior chain here. Spend a minimum of 15 to 20 seconds in this position here. Have your shoulders on the floor, try and relax and make sure that you keep breathing. As you relax, you must make sure to keep your pelvis in posterior tilt to avoid going into the lumbar spine too much. 
To get out, you're going to replace your hands back where they were, push down onto the floor with them, and then shuffle your body back. And use your feet here, of course, to push your hips back to where they started. Finally, you're going to grab two of your cubes, place them out in front of you, and move your feet back enough so that you can go into a side bridge. From here, you're going to push your shoulders out and you're going to step one foot across behind the other and turn your body to go into a side bridge. Make sure your shoulder is nice and pushed out here. You're going to make sure that you're lifting the hips here and you're engaging your glute muscles to do so. Try and stay away from arching at the lumbar too much as well. Again, posterior tilt. Here you want to sway back and forwards a little bit and test the integrity of that base, arms, shoulder and strength. So spend a minimum of 10 to 15 seconds on this single arm side bridge support position to build a bit of endurance. Next up you're going to swap sides, same procedure except you're going to do it on the other side. Moving your body backwards and forwards, using your feet here nice and grounded. Try not to have the feet turned out uh, and use them to push your body backwards and forwards. Finally, you're going to reset. And if that variation felt nice enough and easy for you, you're going to go back into your side bridge, same cues apply, lift those hips, glute tension. The only difference now is you're going to be drawing a big overhead circle with that free arm. Make sure your feet are not turned out and nice and grounded and try to follow that free arm with your head here as it goes over and creates a big circle. Try to accumulate a minimum of five to 10 circles before resetting uh, and starting again on the other side. On your resets and transitions, try your best to keep the quality and continuity of movement. Just because you're coming out of a movement, it doesn't mean it's the end of the movement. In fact, the exit is very much part of the pattern, as is the entry. So do not cut those short, but make sure that you perform them and go through them properly. We're approaching the end of the video and that's all I have for you guys today. Leave some comments below letting me know what movements you enjoyed or found the most effective from this video. And if you have any requests, drop them down there as well. I will be checking those out. I will see you on the next one.